We're at Banks Power today. I'm Gail Banks, and I think I'll show you some stuff about what happens under the sheets, so to speak. A lot of people wonder what's going on inside the tin cover on your uh, rear end. There's a lot of theories people have been popping uh, on Facebook about what's really going on in there. I thought, well, okay, let's do a plastic thing and, oh, by the way, we got to do a plastic thing where there's no drain plug in the plastic uh, just to keep our life less complex. So we borrowed a friend's uh, 03 F-150 Harley-Davidson Ford, of course, and it's got a pretty significant rain gear setup, and we've got it filled uh, with a 75W90 synthetic, and there are a number of things I wanted to talk about on this before we even spin it. We're going to spin it at 15 miles an hour. We're going to spin it at 30. With this thing up on the uh, hoist, I don't want to go much further. And of course, we pulled the rear tires and wheels off, so it, and it's a disc brake setup, so no drums are going to fly off. Uh, basically, we've filled this to the factory fill level. And the first thing I wanted to point out a lot of people go, oh, you got to fill the rear end high enough so the oil goes into the axle tubes. Well, what happens when you start running to that high enough thing? Uh, here it is. It's filled to the Ford level, and we're actually a bit below the axle tube. It might look a little different from the camera angle, but once we start running, you can reference these fill level marks, and you'll see what's going on with the actual level in, in the sump of the differential. As the ring gear turns, it carries lube with it and flings it off into a channel that's in the casting that takes it to both pinion bearings, all the way to the front and falling down on and lubing the uh, rear pinion bearing. Also, I want you to notice what's going on in terms of spill-off towards the axle tubes. In other words, there is a dynamic situation, even if you haven't filled it, so it flows into the axle tubes with this truck sitting still, which is meaningless. Uh, it needs to be in the axle tubes when the truck is moving. You'll notice there's enough action here as you get up to speed that you're actually going over these outside bearings and into the axle tubes. So let's fire this thing. And 15. All right, here we go. Right away, you see it start picking up lube at the ring gear. We're at 15 miles an hour. You can see the lube coming up and making a direction change right here. If we had a squared off cover, that direction change would be pretty remarkable. By that I mean there'd be a whole lot of fluid action there and here. You can see a little bit down in here. Notice where the oil level is now? So, so much for getting it into the axle tube on this side. The other side is pretty dynamic because you have the ring gear and you have the, the speed transducer that gives you your speedo output. So you see the ring gear driving the, the lube up, and right here, there's a, a bit of a square corner in this plastic model. Imagine, and of course, I've got a better angle on what's happening turbulence-wise than you do, but I'm telling you, the lube is going up there and having to make a square corner and it's doing a whole lot of work to the loop to make that happen. So imagine if the back of this was flat and it came out square corner, went up square corner, and went over. The fluid flow would look nowhere near as cool as this. So now looking over my shoulder, you can really see what I'm talking about. The lube, most of the lube is falling back down before it goes forward to the pinion bearing and this is just a taste of what you'd have if this thing came back three inches and was dead flat. 
So let's go to 30. Can we go to 30? There we go. So now we're at 30 miles an hour. You can only imagine what happens when you're at 60, 70, or 80. But you're getting spill off that I mentioned filling down into the axle tube. You'll also notice there's aeration in the lube right now. Now can we bring it down to idle? And go ahead and put on the brakes. Let's stop the, the ring gear. Now you'll notice the flow back in. Here comes the stock fill level. You notice it's foaming on top. I hope you all can see that. Uh, there's your air coming out of the lube as it sits still. The whole idea of different shapes to this housing has to do with maintaining the fluid travel with the ring gear, as you guys just saw at 15 miles an hour, you could really see it. Uh, if you change the shape from the intended shape, and I, I, I firmly believe that you want, as close as you can, you want the distance from the inside of the cover to the ring gear to remain as consistent as possible. So you've got a consistent lube velocity through that, through that channel. And that's pretty sacred in there. What you do with fins and what you do to improve the heat transfer from the fluid through the material to the air, that's pretty important. Now we all know that aluminum transfers heat better than steel. So right off, you'd think if you made the rear cover out of aluminum, uh, you'd, you'd get better heat transfer. That's true. Uh, some guys have asked, well, I'm making carbon fiber. Well, that's pretty much an insulator. This plastic is an insulator. You really don't want to make them out of an insulator. You want to get the heat the hell out of the lube. You can see the amount of foam that's already coming out of the oil. Our uh, aeration sample, uh, we let that sit for at least 12 hours in a graduated cylinder and then we reheat it to the original temperature it was when we put it into the graduated cylinder and we look at the percentage reduction in oil volume and the only way that can happen is the oil's not evaporating, the air's coming out. For those of you who've been following this, we've been at it five weeks now and we're working every day. So I especially want to thank Curtis, who's up in the truck, running the action from upstairs. Uh, and of course, there's this fool who's under the truck while it's on the hoist and running. Uh, don't do this at home. Anyhow, we're going to be coming with the data. And uh, we've really refined the test. My curiosity is kind of uh, overwhelming. And, I, by God, want the numbers, but the other side of me wants the numbers to be absolutely repeatable and testable by any of the guys whose covers I test. It's got to be dead honest. Secondly, I want the knowledge, and there's nowhere to find the knowledge. It's just not out there. So stay tuned. <laughs> there's more on the way. If you want to follow along with the progress, or you want to follow along with all the other stuff we're doing, please subscribe. I think you'll find some enjoyable stuff. And maybe we'll all learn something. <laughs>